hey, hey, Raiders block. A buddy of mine DM me, asked me about it. Let's get into it. If it can help him, it can help you. Okay. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is let's distinguish these two different skill sets, composition and revision. Composition is a technique that's all about ritual, being consistent. You got to make the time in your day or in your week where you're setting things up the same way. You're putting the same tea in the same mug. Um, you know, it's before everyone else is up in the morning or you know you go to that same cafe where you like to sit in the same spot you have the same journal with the same pen you know you try to keep it all nice and consistent so you can get this kind of lock in um, and walk yourself into that mental state of radical openness to the possibilities you're not in a judgmental frame you're in this kind of loose frame almost like as if you just woke up in the morning and you're still kind of half in a dream state that's the perfect place for you to get into it and, and, and kind of work with some possibilities and come up with new things. For young poets, um, or you know, young meaning early career, or just, just getting started out, this is an intoxicating time. It's really exciting. It's really interesting. And the kind of chemicals released are almost like kind of like a high. Um, it's so interesting to be immersed in these kind of crazy associations and music, and it's really, really invigorating. Some of that does wear off to a certain extent, um, or it just changes as, as you develop. Um, but still, you want to be able to get yourself, um, whether you're feeling the magic or not, you want a consistent set of practices so you can get yourself into that mental state and get ready to work, right? Um Revision is very different. Revision, you want to be able to flip that switch on and become a psycho killer where you're your worst editor. Um, you are really looking oppositionally for weaknesses in your poem and you're trying to salvage anything you could use um, that, that has upside in it. And you're kind of look at these drafts less as a finished product or this invaluable whole and more of a roadmap toward the poem you want to write. Um, so you, maybe in the draft, you're kind of leaving yourself these little Karens or markers um, to the terrain that eventually you want to build. That's more of the revision mentality, right? Where um, you um, don't care whether it's going to take you two weeks or two years. Um, you're going to stick to a poem and find a way to pull it through and make it something you're proud of. Truly, truly proud of and want to send out, right? Two different processes. Now, what I told um, my buddy is if you're stuck on this uh, composition process, it's a great time to really, really invest and double down in the revision process. Interestingly enough, um, there's a huge amount of resources around revision because the poetry workshop, by and large, is really, really oriented toward at least some of that process. It's oriented towards teaching you how to read and respond to a poem to balance its strengths and weaknesses, and to find ways to kind of reshape um, a poem. Now, a lot of workshops don't then bring back the subsequent revision, um, and you're not kind of taking a text through this kind of whole life cycle. But nevertheless, it is focused on developing your critical sense. You can also develop your critical sense in doing exactly what this, this um, person was doing, reading some more poetry, reading contemporary poetry, trying to understand where your stuff might fit in, where a poem... Um, could be more akin to this type of poem or more akin to that type of poem or fails to achieve um, this type of volta or turn in, in this part of a poem or, um, you know, its imagery could be sharper, its dependence on adjectives could be less or whatever it is. And then you go back and, and you try to tune. Now you could say, well, you're just stealing other people's ideas or you're no longer an original, but I think that's kind of silly, right? There's only so many ways to make a great poem and... Um, there's no harm in emulating other people's processes. And if you don't like it and you revise a poem to be more like, um, you know, Ellen Bass, Bass's poem, and then you're like, well, I don't, I don't like the outcome, then you just go back or you try something new. And emulating Ellen Bass, I don't, I don't think it's going to make you w weaker or worse in any way, shape, or form. You, you're probably going to learn from that experience. And I don't think she would be bothered anyway. I mean, you can write her, write her, uh, send her a letter if you want and be like, I really, really admire your stuff. I'm trying to write more like you. What is she going to say? <laughs> uh, 
All right. So um, the next thing that we'll, we'll talk about um, is this kind of confrontation with reality that this um, buddy of mine is having um, where you're like, oh, my gosh, Ellen Bass is the bomb. I don't know that I can do that. And um, I think this is productive. I think this feeling of, of uncertainty and not knowing whether you're going to be able to, to do what she has done is great. Um, because when you experience that, um, it's going to make you um, very, very anxious um, and, and perhaps depressed, right? Um, but this struggle, this, this struggle this, that, that, you're, that you go through, ultimately, I think, is ennobling. Right? It's going to make you a better person because you're able to acknowledge the success of other people and you're able to appreciate the work that these other poets are doing and you're able to admire them for what they're good at. That growing and putting that energy out into the world to be able to accept and embrace the excellence of others, in the long term, that's going to catalyze enormous growth in your writing and yourself. People who aren't able to do that and resent the success for, for, of others um, and aren't able to appreciate the success that other people experience, they're basically slowly poisoning their own work, right? Their, their work is going to shrivel over time with possibility because they're, they're, they're not getting larger. They're not enlarging their imagination, they're shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. Being able to say, "Wow, Ellen Boss is, is, is Ellen Bass is doing this," and um, you know, uh, I don't know, um, Louise Glick is doing this, and um, you know, um, you know, wh whoever you want, um, uh, yeah, um, Warsaw and Shire is doing that. You know, all these things are going to help you um, enlarge and 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 grow your perspective. It's it's not going to shrink. It's it's, it's going to get bigger. Um, so, in the long term, in the short term, it it, it might be painful, but I do think that struggle, um, of of and crisis, um, where you're coming to grips with with what you can do and what your limits are is so, so, so important. It's so, so important. Um, and, and I think people who don't go through that type of thing in life and they look for shortcuts to skirt around this kind of large sense of like, can I do, can I be great? Do I want to be great? Um, what is what is greatness to me? People who look for cheats on that and are like, oh, greatness is just something people made up and, and greatness is this and any eh, of those people... You know, probably they're, they're, you know, they just had friends in the right places. I think if you actually read some of the biographies of some of these poets and delve into their lives a little bit, you're going to see that, sure, sometimes people had, had help starting out. Um, but there's a lot of examples of poets who, who overcome tremendous, tremendous adversity to get there. I'm a big uh, Ruth Stone fan. Um, and my gosh, I mean, you know, I can admire her writing without wanting or wishing the same types of um, struggles that she had in her life in mine. And I think that's going to be true of a lot of different artists and, and writers who you read about. Um, and I think that can, that can give you some humility as well. I'm grateful for the opportunities and the, the, the things that I've gotten, right? And I know with the, with the tools that I have, I can continue to push myself to be better. So that's that confrontation part. The last thing I'm going to talk about really quickly um, is this growth of a poet always has all these false summits where you put in a lot of work, you put in um, a lot of effort, and you think you're getting better and better, and you earn this new perspective. But the new perspective also contains disillusionment, right? And the disillusionment part is painful. And you wish you could go back to that innocence before you would earn that new perspective. But it's not possible. Right. Um, my buddy Alexander Pope wrote about this very, very elegantly. OK, so he's talking about um, developing your appreciation and depth of understanding of poetry is like being a mountain climber. OK, um, short views we take nor the 
nor see the lanks behind, but more advanced, behold, with strange surprise, new distant scenes of endless science rise. So that's that insight. By science, he means knowledge. So my buddy had that new insight as he's reading and growing and challenging himself. He's now able to understand and see things he couldn't see before. So pleased at first, the towering Alps we try, mount o'er vales and seem to tread the sky. The eternal snow appear already past, and the first clouds and mountains seem the last. In other words, it seems like you're reaching that summit where things are going to get easier. You're going to have this um, clear, open vista, um, and your the hard work will have paid off, right? But those attained, we tremble to survey the growing labors of the lengthened way. The increasing prospect tires our wandering eyes. Hills peep o'er hills, and Alps on Alps arise. So you get to that shoulder where you put in all that work, and you look you, instead of looking back and thinking about how far you've come, what you feel is how far you have to go. Oh my gosh, there's another summit on top of this one, and another summit on top of that. That's just part of the process. Folks ask me about, you know, do I look down on un unpublished poets? Um, and, and, am I conceited or something about being a published poet? Um, no. I recognize how far I have to go. And in the grand scheme of things, how little I've accomplished. Um, and um, there are a tremendous number of poets I admire um, on this community, on this Reddit community. Um, and, 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 out, out there in the world. Um, and I realize I am a very, very small fish in a very, very, very large pond. It's an honor to be able to engage with you guys and discuss this stuff with you. And hopefully my perspective um, of, of, you know, um, whatever visibility I have into this world can help you and, and help you get out ahead of some of these experiences and disappointments. Um, but with that disappointment, that you're experiencing, which I myself have experienced so many times, you have to recognize that comes out that comes with insight as well. So if you're growing enough to be challenged by the work of others, that's an incredibly, incredibly good sign. Thanks for your time. Talk soon.